All right, so this is your lecture on chapter seven. Remember seven is the idea of hammering out the new uh, republic. So we're gonna look at the Federalists. We're gonna look at Washington's first government, then Adams, uh, as well as um, Jefferson, the war of 1812, etc. cetera. All right, so the first thing to remember, right, is the first president. Okay, we're gonna get uh, George Washington. He's going to create his cabinet. So remember, we have Jefferson as Secretary of State, Hamilton is Treasury, and Knox is War. Um, Congress is going to pass the Judiciary Act of 1789, which is really important. It's going to create federal courts, all right, as well as three circuit courts for appeals. So it's going to take a little bit of work off the Supreme Court. Uh, we're also then going to get the Bill of Rights. These are going to be added. Remember that this is the big negotiation between the Anti-Federalists and the Federalists in order to get the Constitution ratified. So this is really important. You guys definitely need to know and remember this. So um, do what this slide asks you to do, okay? All right, uh, this is just kind of an image of uh, the Federalist Papers, where the Federalists were located, where the Anti-Federalists were the majority and located, and when where there was some even divides. So um, uh, kind of an important thing to just note as to what's going on and who's where, all right? Um, so when you look, okay, we have some equal divides up here and then up here, all right, um, this is where we had a bunch of anti-federalists, so this is why we wrote the Federalist Papers, all right, so uh, remember that one. All right, so once the government is established, we have Hamilton in as treasury. He's going to establish and create his national bank, which not everybody's going to like because, remember, it absorbs the debt of all states and then makes all states responsible for contributing to paying off the Revolutionary War debt. So this is going to split Jefferson and Madison versus Hamilton. Um, first, they argue that it's unconstitutional. It does not say anything in the Constitution about creating a bank anywhere. So uh, they're going to constitutionally fight back. And then they're also going to fight back because of the idea that states like Virginia have already paid their war debt. So why should they be responsible for New York and um, Philadelphia and states like that? Um, the other thing that Hamilton's um, financial program is going to do is it's going to impose a tax on whiskey production. All right. So it's going to increase the tariffs on foreign imports. All right. It's going to impose a domestic tax on whiskey. Um, a lot of people are going to look at this like, um, this could be another Shays Rebellion, all right, that these people who produce whiskey are going to rise up, and they do, except George Washington and Hamilton are going to ride in with an organized, structured military paid for by Congress who can collect taxes, and they are going to put down the Whiskey Rebellion, thereby showing the Constitution is a strong government, federalism is going to work, George Washington as an executive branch representative is somebody to be reckoned with and that the new structure of government is one to actually work better than the Articles of Confederation. All right, Jefferson's agrarian vision, right? Remember, he's all about states' rights. He's all about farming. He's all about kind of the, the Western idea and expansion, okay? Um, so he's going to be really big on agrarian products, all right? He's going to be all about... Um, the improvements that can be made for agrarian societies. And he's also going to be pro-French Revolution. His idea is, let's help them out. Twofold. One is, he was lived in France for three years, so he really liked it there. Uh, he wants to help them out. He believed that what they were doing was a good thing. He helped write the Declaration of Rights over there. But also, it was going to be a boom for Southern agrarian products. So... It was going to increase um, exports. So the French Revolution is obviously going to divide everybody. All right. So Jefferson is going to be for it. As Secretary of State, it's his job to advise the president on foreign issues. All right. Uh, Alexander Hamilton is going to be against it. George Washington is going to side with Alexander Hamilton. So this is going to be kind of the last little straw for Jefferson. He's going to resign soon after this. Washington is going to issue a proclamation of neutrality, which just says, hey, we're just going to trade. We're a new country. We're not taking sides in this. Uh, next, we're going to get Jay's Treaty because we have this little situation in 1793 where the British Royal Navy is taking U.S. merchant ships and they are forcing the 
men on the ships to be part of the Navy saying, well, you were British just a little while ago, so you're still British and they're also taking our goods. So John Jay is going to go over and negotiate this and not much good comes from it. So British, um, the Britain says that they will remove some troops and the Indian agents, um, agents from the Northwest. But in return, the U.S. still needs to compensate Britain for pre-revolutionary debts. This is not going to make most people happy, nor is it actually going to happen. And so therefore, um, British Navy will continue to take our ships. All right. Now, remember, close off the coast of Florida in Haiti, we're going to have a revolution. Okay. This is going to be a massive slave revolution. They're going to um, uprise. They're actually going to win. They're going to take over the government of Haiti. France is too busy with Napoleon, all right, dealing over um, with his taking over of Europe. So he doesn't really care about this and doesn't spend a lot of time on this. But the Southerners are going to react rather harshly because they are going to inflict more um, slave codes against the slaves of the South. Then we're going to get president number two. We get John Adams. Remember, John Adams is going to be known as the first single-term president, as well as some other interesting things that he does. So first, he's going to get rid of Hamilton. There's going to be a huge uh, split in the Federalist Party because of this. So factions are going to um, ignite, all right, and separate. Uh, Southern tobacco and rice planters <clears throat> are going to grow in abundance, and they're going to be moving... Um, out west, okay. Um, this is supported by Jefferson and Madison. Then, um, because of the French Revolution and the fact that John Adams is not going to engage, he does issue something called the Naturalization, Alien, and Sedition Acts, which basically says um, if you're from Canada and have any French relationships, you cannot naturalize to become a U.S. citizen until you've lived here for 14 years. That's kind of drastic. Um, and then we're going to have the um, no new um, people from Canada or France coming in. All right. And then we're going to have the Sedition Acts, which says you cannot speak out against the president in the press. All right. Now he is going to jail people for this. All right. But take note that this act does not say anything about the vice president. So the Federalist um, newspapers are going to rip apart uh, Jefferson for his alignment with France. So uh, the next thing that's gonna happen is the X, Y, Z affairs. This is something to remember. So French is also now going to begin seizing US ships. Um, so we have Britain and France doing this. So we're gonna send some people over to negotiate and France's reply is to try to bribe us. Uh, this does not go well where you don't really appreciate being bribed. So um, we're gonna say, then fine, we're gonna leave you and not trade with you anymore. France is gonna be like, no, no, don't do that. Uh, so we are going to reach an agreement and they will stop seizing our ships. All right. So remember the revolution of 1800, super, super important. Jefferson's going to win the electoral vote 73 to 65. All right. Um, but remember that Aaron Burr, okay, is going to tie. All right. Because he's up in um, the New England and New York area campaigning. Okay. So the House is going to decide this where there's going to be some negotiating. They're going to take several votes. It's going to be tied several times until finally the Federalists who are in there ask Hamilton, what do we do? Hamilton's going to say, well, pretty much I hate Burr, so vote for Jefferson. Jefferson's going to become the third president. And what we need to remember is that the revolution is the idea that it's the first peaceful transition of power with a bitter, uh, divided country. Okay, so um, continuity over time, the idea that when we have these elections, the person in the White House and central seat of government packs their bags and leaves. The new person comes in. This has been our standard since the founding of the country. All right, this is an example of political parties and how they're rising up and where they're shifting. Highly recommend that you get this down into your notes. Remember that the know-nothings are going to come along soon. They're a fascinating little group of people, so uh, we do get to meet them. Um, coming up. But right now what we have over here, right, is we're going to have the Jeffersonians and the Federalists. They're both going to split and become a branch of what's called the Republicans. So we're going to get the um, Jeffersonian Republicans and we're going to get the National Republicans and 
it's just going to be some interesting times here. So, um, all right. So out in the West, we're going to have the Treaty of Greenville. This is basically just, we have a skirmish with Native American Indian Confederacy. Um, we dominate them. They sign a treaty and give us land. So normal, normal. That's how it's going to go from here on out. All right. Plantations are making lots of money, so they want more land in the south, which means that these poor farmers are going to have to start moving out west, all right, um, across the Ohio River to get land in order to try to make a living, okay? This is also going to happen on the eastern front, because remember that the eldest gets all of the land, so um, the big families up there, they also are suffering from a lack of land, so they're also going to begin moving out west. Again, equaling more problems with the native population, okay? While Jefferson is president, we're going to have a war with pirates. So the Barbary states of North Africa, we are gonna send our Navy out and we're gonna win, all right? We're gonna get the Judiciary Act of 1801, which is right before Adams leaves office. Um, and he's trying to appoint about a bunch of federal judges all right, this is going to be found unconstitutional down here in the Marbury v. Madison case, okay? So Marbury v. Madison, super, super important, okay? Explained it a lot of times, but remember, Marbury was promised a job. Madison, the new Secretary of State, refuses to give him his job. Jefferson, the new president, says, no job for you. So Marbury is going to sue in the Supreme Court where the Chief Justice, John Marshall, a Federalist appointment, is going to say Marbury has a good strong case, but unfortunately, the law that allowed him to be in front of us is unconstitutional, so we cannot rule on the case because you have no right to be in front of us. This creates judicial review, okay? So Marshall says, hey, Marbury should get his job. You guys are kind of being jerks, but it's unconstitutional for us to rule on this case, so sorry, Madison gets to do whatever he wants. All right, so now Jefferson, remember how he's going to criticize the bank because uh, the bank is nowhere in the actual constitutional powers? Well, he's going to go and he's going to create, um, make a huge land purchase, all right, the Louisiana Purchase from Napoleon. Also, not anywhere in the Constitution, so at times... Certain presidents will shift from a strict constructionist to a loose constructionist when it serves their interests. Um, once we get this land, Aaron Burr is going to try to become, you know, the king of his own territory, which is essentially kind of a form of treason. So he's going to get a general. They're going to try to go take over some Western territory and put him at the head of it. Uh, the general rats him out, so he's going to flee and go to Europe for a while to avoid charges. Once we purchase this land, we have to explore it. That's where Lewis and Clark comes in. Hopefully you paid attention in eighth grade and remember about them. All right, a bunch of other stuff is gonna happen, okay? Um, we're going to refuse to trade with Britain and um, France because we're so fed up with the wars, which is obviously going to hurt us economically. So uh, we're gonna undo that as soon as Jefferson is out of office. Okay, once Jefferson's out of office, then we have Madison, the new president. We have a bunch of people angry that Britain is still taking our men out on our ships, confiscating our goods, um, inflicting harm on our trade. So we're going to declare war and we're going to try to bring Canada into our fold and save them from the crown. Canada didn't really want this, just FYI. So we're going to go to war with Britain here, all right, and eventually what happens is everybody agrees to leave everybody else alone and we're going to um have one huge victory okay this is going to be in new orleans this is going to be what makes jackson famous okay um and we're going to essentially negotiate an end to the war of 1812. so the breakup is official we're no longer part of england people take us a little bit more seriously now we do agree to leave canada alone Britain stops taking our ships and our men, and we all move forward in a happy fashion with a new war hero, Andrew Jackson. The Treaty of Ghent is going to be what ends the war, okay? And what you really need to remember is Marshall. Marshall is really important, okay? Uh, being the head of the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice, being a federal 
Federalist appointee, he's going to make a lot of decisions that impact us for a very long time, okay? The next person you need to really know is Henry Clay. Henry Clay is going to come from Kentucky. This guy's with us for, like, ever, okay? Like, just know that he's with us forever. He's going to do a lot of stuff uh, for America, um, and we will talk about it as we move on. These are all the cases that you need to know, right? And this is where the Federalist Chief Justice John Marshall is pretty much going to tell the states, you know what? you don't have power, um, we actually hold all of these powers. Powers of taxing, powers of um, trade, powers of uh, choice. All right, so this is going to be kind of a big deal. Then we're going to get the Monroe Doctrine, which basically says, hey, Europe, stay on your side of the planet. We're going to stay on our side, and so we should be good after that, okay? Remember that the Republican Party is going to be divided, Clay on one side, Jefferson's followers on the other side. So we're going to eventually get the Jeffersonian Democrats, soon to be the Jacksonian Democrats. This is just fun to remember that Thomas Jefferson was president of the United States at one point. But if you notice, Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence, the Statute of Virginia for Religious Freedom, and father of the University of Virginia, this is his tombstone, and president is nowhere on there. Kind of lets you know what he thought was most important in his life. Cool. Here's what you need to do. All right. Add these to your Unit 3. Big idea understandings, make sure you have key events, sources, themes, etc. All right. Um, and until next time.